Hey, good day to you. Um, I wanted to take a little bit of time here to show you guys a resource that I've been working on for the last couple of years. Uh, my goal was to digitize our MMR uh, curriculum here as much as possible, try to make it a little easier for us to grade, and trying to answer that question a lot of us get stuck on of what do we do for students who are absent. Um, this does not fully fix our problem there. However, I think it does give a, a good resource to you, and it is free, which is really nice. Um, there is a paid version, but I use the free version, so I want to show you this. So I've shared a link um, to uh, this MMR folder that I've created using this website, formative.com. Some dr uh, districts actually already use this for some of their assessment platforms. Uh, ours does not, but... Uh, you can still, like I said, create within it for free. Um, and if you copy my folder, you'll actually have access to everything I've already created. So you won't have to worry about paying to create anything anyway. So um, I'm going to go ahead and open up the MMR folder. You can see I've got my other courses listed here as well. But uh, when you click on my link I've shared, you'll get this MMR folder here. And here are our different themes right here. So basically... Uh, for each theme, I've, I've created the assignment as much as possible digitally so that students can go in and access this. I think a lot of us are ending out theme one, getting into theme two uh, or thereabouts. The nice thing is here, a couple things. First of all, some of these can be set to auto grade, which is really nice. Depending on the type of uh, assignment we have, some of them will grade themselves. And the ones that don't grade themselves uh, you can do some mass grading, which goes a lot faster. So, for example, farm swap. Uh, this one is one that I was able to create uh, with a lot of auto grading because we have quick and easy conversion. So here's what it looks like from the teacher side. Um, when you go in, you'll see this. Here is the uh, worksheet. You'll recognize that here to the left. And I've pre-built an answer key over here as well. So 450 apples swapped for tomatoes. And then if you look over here, you'll see the answer. Um, from student side, let me just open that really quickly here. I'll just open student preview. When the uh, students go into this, their page will look slightly different, but uh, a lot of it's pretty much the same. Here's the worksheet. Here's where they input their answers. They can zoom in and uh, see everything right here. And then I have them put in there answers as they go. All right, so it's the exact same worksheet, the exact same tasks that they are being asked to do. Um, instead, though, their answers are digital. So then after they've gone through that, they've entered their answers over there to the side. It will also appear on your responses tab. And the questions they get right will be in green. The questions they get right will be in red. I did not assign this to my class. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, on a different assignment here. So here was an assignment I did. You can see the green here where they've got them right, the red where they missed them, and you can see the totals. So I can just go through, you'll actually have the names listed here, and I can grade those and see how many they got right very quickly. Um, let's see, page appears to be froze. Let me see if I can refresh it and scroll that a little easier. There we go. I've got the names hidden for student privacy, but as you can see, I've got all the names listed here. Type in all the grades. Boom, done. All right, so that is the case uh, for the assignments that we can auto grade. Very nice. You do have to look out for the occasional um, student who maybe did something slightly off the norm. So if they put in 750 apples instead of 750, uh, you'll have to go ahead and add that to your answer key. Um, and that's why I specify in those, enter the number only, try to give them a little direction like that. All right, so that's very nice, very quick, very easy to grade those. Uh, but the obvious question then is, what do we do with assignments that are not auto-graded? So let's just open up uh, following the bouncing ball here. This is a great example of it, day two. Again, same project. Same stuff that students are being asked to do. Let me open up the student page here. So you'll see the worksheet just like before. <coughs> and we've got the spots for them to put in the answer. 
let me show you an example of this. So uh, the first one, they have to fill in the table. Uh, they'll have to show your work, and they'll actually be able to type in, all right, rebound one, uh, I predicted two meters, and it actually went 2.5, whatever, right? They can go in and they can put in all their answers just like that, all right, which is very, very uh, convenient for them uh, and for us because then we get these answers back on our side very quickly. They can create graphs in here. But, of course, these things cannot be auto-graded. They have to be graded by hand. So when we have to grade a problem by hand, let me find an example of one previous where I had to grade it by hand. Uh, here was one that I had to grade by hand for my one of my other classes. So they had input all their answers. All I have to do is I've got all their answers right here. This was question number six on one of my algebra projects. They had to fill in this table for everything. And uh, you can see a lot of different answers. I was expecting to see answers 7, 8, 9, 10, and 21. And so I can just hold down the control button. Everywhere I see the 7, 8, 9, 10, and 21, while I'm holding down the control button, I can click on those, or I can just click the checkbox either way without holding down the control button. And once I've selected all the ones I want to, I'll just come over here, pull this over to green to one point, and I've graded all of that problem all at once instead of going page by page. So I can just grade them problem by problem very quickly, um, and then I can go in, and if I want, I can give partial credit on certain problems. For example, I saw... 7, 8, 9, 10, 27. So maybe I want to give this student, you know, half a point or three quarters of a point. I can do that as well. So I can go through quickly and grade all of those. Very, very quick uh, to do. The nice thing is for those of you that use Google Classroom, this links up to Google Classroom. So I will just go into each of these. They're already created for you. I hit assign. And I can choose the class I want to assign them to. My school used Microsoft Teams. It's compatible with that as well. So I would just click on the class I wanted to use, assign, or assign to Microsoft Teams. It gives me a link. It's the same link for every classroom, which I love for Google Classroom because I don't have to go through and change the link for each bell like I would have to do in Desmos. Instead, it's literally the URL right here. The same URL for you as it is for them. I just copy that URL and I can share that to my classroom. That will take them into the student side, but nicely it takes me into the teacher side. Um, it's a really, really great resource. If you play around with it for 30 minutes, you will figure it out very, very quickly. And then you can choose uh, when you want to use it. The other thing I like about it is, so following the bouncing ball day one, let's click on this one. I can link or embed. Uh, videos into it. Um, maybe I want them to use Staplet for their research. Then I can link their Staplet directly and it jumps them right to that resource instead of trying to share out separate resources. Everything is, uh, all my links are found in one place. Uh, you will find in this MMR folder basically every context that we do in this course. Um, that is not to say you should use it on every context. There are certainly ones that I did not use it on. Uh, however, just out of the uh, abundance of preparation, I went ahead and created it for every single context that it seemed to fit um, in some form or fashion. And even when it does not auto grade, it is very, very convenient because I can mass grade very, very quickly. Um, and then also, students going to be gone, uh, students absent. Well, instead of me having to um, try to get them caught up when they come back, I can just send them this digital link and say, here, do this assignment and uh, you know, ask me any questions. So for example, the cost of college. This is a, a really nice uh, project for the students. Let's uh, do one last glance at what this looks like from the student side. So students go in. There's a lot of links in this. So um, go to this side uh, site to get started. So they'll go in, they'll click on that link, takes them to that college survey linked directly. 
they enter in their career clusters. Nice. And then here's another link. Click here for a complete list of options from the career clusters in the Ohio Means Job link there. Um, secondary cluster. So I can quickly direct them to these things. I can put in multiple choice questions. What is the least amount of money you would be willing to make? And they choose those, so on and so forth. I just find this to be very, very convenient for me to quickly uh, be able to assign and grade things to my students. And at bare minimum, I can use it if a student is going to be absent. So um, one last time, basically here's how it works. You'll click on the MMR link that I shared here in Classroom. It will take you to that MMR folder um, where we have, get back to that. Uh, you create and then you'll have this folder imported immediately. You'll have all your themes. You can click on a theme that you're using and you can go in, let's say we're doing cost of college and you can assign it to your class. When you do that, it's going to give you a link right here, which you can copy and post it in Classroom or Teams. It is the same link that I have up here as well. Don't actually want this class to do it, so let's go ahead and delete that or I'll forget. There we go. All right. Then after they're done, I can go in. Anything that's auto graded will already be done for me, but I can quickly mass grade uh, as well just by clicking on all the ones that are correct. I use the control click, but you can also just click the text or the checkbox. All those, I slide them over to one point. They've all got one point now. And then after I've done that, I can input all of their grades directly from the screen where I have them arranged by last name. All right, very, very nice to work on. I'm gonna stick around uh, monitoring classroom over the coming days if anyone has any questions or would like to know more about this. Um, but I've really found this to be useful for my class and I hope you do too. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Let's see.